today we're going to make a mash for moonshine and today we're not going to use any common ingredients that you would find on your shelf. Today uh, instead of using apple juice or sugar or corn we're going to use bananas and we're going to make banana brandy. Now this is easier than making corn moonshine. Why? Because there's one less step involved. When making corn moonshine, you have to convert the starch over to sugar and then convert the sugar to alcohol. Here you just have to convert the sugar to alcohol and any form of sugar will work. Uh, virtually any fruit will work. Citrus fruits might not work very well. Uh, so we're going to make a nice banana mash. So of course we need bananas. And now there's going to be no exact recipe to this. We're just going to get as close as we think we need to do and that's all you need to do too. So we need to get some bananas peeled in the bowl. Make sure you start with clean equipment and clean hands. Now if your bananas are slightly ripe, slightly brown, that's perfectly fine. You might be able to find some cheaper bananas that way. I was in a store and they had uh, half a grocery cart full of slightly overripe bananas that they were selling for half the price of regular bananas. So if you can find some slightly ripe bananas, jump on them if you plan on doing this. Now we're just going to make uh, enough mash out of this one bunch of bananas. By all means you can add as much or as little to this recipe as you want. And there's our bananas. There's our banana peel. We'll throw these away. Now before we start work on this uh, we want to make sure that we have an active yeast going. So we'll get something to make us some active yeast. So what we need to make an active yeast for fermentation is we'll just take an ordinary glass. We will put some sugar in it. Don't mind about how much or how little. As long as you have the main ingredients in there, that's the thing that's important. Now here we just have uh, Red Star yeast. This is just a bulk package of yeast. We have a Amish store around us, so uh, I was able to pick this up instead of the little packets. And uh, we'll just add one, two. That's good enough for what we have. And then we'll add some warm water. and stir it up. Now if this, if this yeast gets active, while I'm working on this, you will see the foam rise in this glass and that will tell us it's working. The entire time I'm working on this, you will slowly see the uh, level of this glass rise, so keep an eye on it while I'm working. All right, we're done with that. So now uh, bananas are pretty thick and they won't liquefy pretty good. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of water just to give it something to help it uh, liquefy. Now you can use anything you have to uh, break these bananas up. If you have a blender, use a blender. If all you have is a potato masher, use the potato masher. Uh, so what we're going to do first, we're going to go with the potato masher and we're going to mash the bananas a little bit first. This is actually working better. If you have the blender, that would work great. It's just that the uh, chunks are just too big 
for the blender. All right, we're going to add a little more water to that. Keep an eye on our yeast. Okay, here's what we have so far. Now we have that broken up enough with the potato masher, we can continue with the blender. to it. You don't need it super thin, but you just need it thin enough to work with. Now to give our banana mash a little extra potency, and make them go farther, we're going to add a little sugar to it. You don't have to do this. Like I said, we're just going to give it a kick. And we're only going to make enough for demonstration purposes. So there we have a good consistency for our banana mash. So there we have a good consistency for our banana mash. And as you can see, our yeast has risen quite nicely. We were we started here and you see the foam is rising and uh, our banana mash is ready so now we'll just incorporate this into here and give it a stir now because this mixture is uh, mostly sugar. We're going to have to cut it down quite a lot. So we're going to transfer this to something I can pour from. Okay, now that I have something that I can pour from, we can transfer this to a fermentation unit and uh, let's pour some of this into here alright that's good the rest of that we're going to top with water because uh, once the because once the uh, yeast makes so much alcohol, the yeast will die off. So once it gets around near 20 percent, the yeast will start dying off, and there'll be a lot of sugar left in here afterwards. So by diluting this we'll uh, ensure that all of these sugars are converted into alcohol. All right, We're going to have more than one container. We'll use this as well. That might be a little too much. 
There we go. That's better. And uh, we'll get one more container. I'll do fine. Now we'll take some warm water. We'll add it to these. Now whenever I make mash or wine or anything, I just use ordinary tap water. But I use the tap water coming out of the hot. That's because it has been demineralized in the hot water heater and also whatever chemicals have been added has also been mostly burned off. Okay, here's our warm water. I'm going to go ahead and add a little more sugar. You can do this afterwards if you want to. I'm not going to add a lot. I'm just going to add a little extra and top off our bottles with it. Give yourself a little room at the top of each of these. That's because if they start bubbling out of control, you'll need some room. And there we go. Now we just close them off. <coughs> we'll come back in a few and see how they're doing. Okay, so now uh, it's been sitting a little bit and I thought maybe that I didn't add enough yeast to it. So I went back and I just made up another thing of yeast. Uh, a couple spoons of sugar, three spoons of yeast, some water, let it foam up, and then I just add it to uh, a little bit to each of our containers, and we'll just let it set for a little bit longer, and uh, in an hour or so, we should be able to see some working results. Okay, so now uh, these have had uh, 45 minutes to sit, and they have been working. And uh, because uh, there is so little room in these jars, uh, the, the pickle jar here had an overflow problem. And we have a slight overflow problem with our jug here. And we might have the same here. So what we're going to do, uh, because these, the banana is a solid sugar, uh, we're going to get more foam. If this was just uh, a corn mash, or an apple wine, uh, we wouldn't have uh, foaming like this. So what I'm going to do now, because uh, we need more room for the bubbles, as you can see right here, we got some bubbles going on, and this might overflow. We're going to transfer some of the liquid to another container and give everything more room to breathe.
See, there we go. That's what I'm talking about right there. Alright, we'll just let that run up. And we'll pour that into a fourth vessel. Which has enough room to breathe. Make sure all of our lids are a little loose. There we go. Now, we're going to give this a minimum of one week's time. And when we're done with this, we just simply pour this into the still. And we distill it down. And when we're finished, we have genuine banana brandy. Okay, so it's been a few days now, and the banana mash has been sitting and bubbling away. And uh, periodically, I have opened up the jar and uh, added some sugar, some additional sugar to it, and uh, let it set again. As you see in this clear jar here, we do have some solids that constantly float up to the top. I have been... Uh, I tighten down the caps and then I give it a good stirring and then I re-loosen the caps. Uh, many solids are on top. Not a lot of solids, however. Not as many as you might think. As you can see, there's still quite a bit of the banana fluid mixed in with the water that stays mixed. So this should be a pretty good batch. Well now when distilling this I'm not going to worry about taking out the solids. I'm just going to leave them in. Of course now if you try this uh, you can try uh, straining them yourself or just leaving the solids in. Um, I don't think it's going to affect anything so uh, we'll try we'll try one bottle with the uh, solids in there and if it fails I'll uh, strain the rest okay so there we have it your banana mash for banana brandy